Hey yo guys, this is uh, my special little vid. Now, I will not be watching SmackDown because it's already airing because it's Toronto Raptor, New Jersey Nets, Game 6, basketball game. By the way, go Raptors. But anyway, here's my special little vid. It's going to be a DVD review and a pay-per-view review. The first up is the pay-per-view review. And that pay-per-view is SummerSlam 94. Yes, this is one of my favorite SummerSlams of all time. Well, let's just go through the card. I mean, the first match was the Head Shrinkers versus Bam Bam Bigelow and IRS. Now, this match is slated as the first match, and it's a very good first match. It's a great way to get the crowd into it. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's a great way to get the crowd. I thought the match was damn entertaining because the Head Shrinkers are probably one of my favorite tag teams in wrestling history. So, I enjoyed that match. Very interesting, and we had. Excuse me, the Head Shrinkers and Alpha beat down Bam Bam Bigelow, which, you know, was nice to that Bam Bam put over his former his former trainer. Then the next match was a very good female wrestling match for the WWF Women's Championship between Alundra Blaze and Bull Meccano. Now, granted, they were not the hottest divas of all time, but <clears throat> this was a straight-up good wrestling match. Great holds, great, anything. I mean, the Divas could learn how to just watch that match and learn how to do a match. I mean, Bull Nakano is one of the greatest ladies wrestlers. And the Japanese know how to wrestle, pretty much. So that was a damn good match. Then the next match, if my memory serves me right, was the Intercontinental title match between Reza Ramon Chico and Big Daddy Cool Diesel. Now, this match was a good Intercontinental title match. I mean, it was great to see Razor win the title again. I mean, Razor is obviously one of my favorites. If you saw Hide My MSN before now, you would have seen my display pick was Razor Ramon. But it's a great match. I mean, a little too much outside stuff from Shawn Michaels and Walter Payton. That kind of distracts from the match, but it was a good match. I mean, we had Razor win his second, second Intercontinental title, his second of four. Or I think five. So good match. Then the next match was Lex Luger versus the Native American Tatanka. Probably one of the more memorable heel turns I'll ever watch. Because the whole thing building up to this match was did Lex Luger sell out? Because at the time he was going as the man made in the USA. So I enjoyed that match. I mean the match was okay. But the end was awesome when everyone thought for sure Luger and then Tatanka just turns around, bam, attacks him, and hits him with a couple end of the trails, and the best part is when he sticks the dollar down in Luger's mouth. Awesome. And it led to a great little feud between Luger and the Million Dollar Corporation until Luger's departure of the WWF in 95. Um, the only pointless match I want to say is on the card is Mabel versus Jeff Jarrett, because this doesn't do anything, doesn't even build a feud, it's just a battle between pretty much gimmicks between the rap gimmick and the country music gimmick. Not a good match, not anything you can really say or remember other than Oscar getting pushed down by Jeff Jarrett. That's it. By the way, for you who don't know, Oscar was Mabel's manager. But then the next match was probably one of the best SummerSlam matches of all time. Cause I know for sure, you know for sure it's summer when it's SummerSlam. Now this match is the steel cage match for the World Wrestling Federation Championship, the Hitman, Bret Hart, versus the Rocket, slash King of Kings, Owen Hart. This match is one of the instant classics that I watch. Because this was a, a damn good cage match. We had plenty of attempts at the escape. Like, the escaped. Like, it shows what a cage match was supposed to be. Like, it changed the whole thing of that. Like, cage matches in the past used to be bloody baths, blood baths and stuff. This was a good wrestling match. We even had great, uh, great outside interference from the Hart family. Fantastic match. I mean, the suplex off the top of the cage. I mean, it had been done before, but nothing like that. And as in the ZVD, I mean, it was nice that he was, like, the way Owen went out in life, it was great that he was there to guide his path. So, I love that match. That's probably one of the matches I put in my top ten on SummerSlam and in wrestling. But then the main event was The Undertaker versus The Under Faker. And I'm going to say the build-up to this match was 
damn good. It's one of the things the WWE can do. They can build up to a match, but sometimes they just can't deliver. Like, this is one of the better build-ups they ever did. They had Paul Bearer claiming that his Undertaker wasn't there because Ted DiBiase claimed he found him. And the only difference between DiBiase's and uh, Paul Bearer's was the fact that DiBiase's Undertaker was controlled by money or whatever. It wasn't the greatest match. I mean, you could really tell that their under faker was really short, which was Brian Lee, but whatever. So, all in all, that's my pay-per-view review of SummerSlam 94. Awesome pay-per-view. If you haven't seen this, you know what you miss it. You gotta have this in your collection. Now, I was gonna do a DVD review, but I may just make that now. But for now, peace.